Hi, my name is Scott Kyle, and I just took delivery of a new Shires uh, with a 7M bell and a lightweight nickel slide. And I want to do a little horn comparison here. Uh, the Shires is a 500 bore. I also have uh, my old Minic EX3. That was the third lightweight jazz horn that he built in uh, developing what became the Con 100H. And I also have an old Bach 12. Um, probably 70s vintage uh, that I've been playing as my backup horn ever since the minic horn got too much red rot and the slide wasn't any good anymore. But it still has great tone and characteristics so we can uh, compare and contrast. So first let's look at the Shire. Um, obviously brand new, beautiful, not quite new, 2010. Um, First thing I noticed when I took it out of the box yesterday uh, is it has a, a really nice open low range. So I'm going to show you that. So that's just fresh out of the box, uh, six and a half AL mouthpiece. Okay, now for comparison, I'm going to grab the Bach because I can show you that the Bach is a little uh, stuffier in the low range. Um, here we go. so obviously I'm a little more comfortable on it. Now let's go to the con. I call it a con because Minic used con tubing by the way, but anyway, it's not the same as any con you could buy. similar in characteristic to the Shires. Um, it's not quite as open as the Bach, I guess. Now, um, let's try some flexibility stuff. Going back to the Shires. Thank <laughs> you. 
tell that the partials are closer together on this horn, uh, so you have to be a little bit more precise to, to make the note um, slot or pop. Uh, there's, it's a little, you can bend the tone a little more, uh, the horn's not helping you find the center of the pitch. Okay, now to the Bach. center of the pitch each time. And, and the funny thing is, is it's not like, it's not like the con where the partials seem closer together. It's just more because of the overtones of this bell with the lacquer stripped off and everything. It's kind of got a wider, fuzzier sound. And so it's not, um, it's not finding the center of those partials quite as well. Okay, now the last thing I want to show you is uh, one of my measures of a good horn is is can it slot on the double G because a lot of horns won't do that um, they'll all slot on an F just fine uh, but for some reason G is a weird note on trombones so if you can find one that'll slot on a G that's a good horn uh. sort of, I was slipping off of it, but it, but you could hear it clicking in, so there was a slot there for the G, and if I played it maybe in a little sharper position, or maybe not sitting down with better air, I think I can make it pop on this Shires. Okay, let's go for the, the minute. And I'll just tell you up front, I've never been able to make this horn slot on that note. This horn doesn't have it. Now this is a great horn. I played this horn for 30 years and it was my only horn and I love its tone. It, it literally weighs half as much as the Shires. Um, it's got some great stuff going for it, but um, the Shires wins on that one. Okay, and now to the Ugly Duckling, back to the Bach 12. And uh, I know for sure this one will slot on the G because that's one of the things that really impressed me about this horn. Uh. Which horn should I use? <laughs> Tell you what, uh, I got this, this Shires from Doug Burt and I'm not going to send it back to him. It's fine and it looks a hell of a lot better and I need my, my Minic slide fixed. Um, so this is going to be my new horn. It's going to get me down the road. Um, it's passed all of my little checks and balances and tests. So at this point, beyond this, it's not up to the horn, it's up to the player. Alright, I got myself a new tool.